Hi everybody, welcome to Band Together's Grandpa Story Hour. Uh, I'm glad you two are, are to tuning into this story hour. Uh, the last book we read was Angelina Ballerina, so do check that out. And let me just give you a two minute why we do this. So I, I understand there's something called the, uh, what is it, Drag Queen Story Hour, or whatever, you know, cool. You do what you gotta do and that's fine. And I thought, well, why not have a Grandpa Story Hour? And so I'm reading stories. The inspiration for me doing this is our own grandsons. That would be Jason and Wyatt and uh, future grandchildren, uh, which we hope are, are coming within the next couple of years. More grandchildren, more, more, more. So I said, you know what? They live in another state. And I thought, hey, man, what better way, in, you know, in this modern day than do a video. And when Ashley, their mother, our daughter-in-law, wants to show them the video, they can show them the video. And I thought, well, let's just share it with the world. And whoever wants to watch, watches. I have hundreds, hundreds of former students that now are mommies and daddies. Maybe they want their old high school band director, high school music teacher, show, share a video and say that was my teacher. And so I have a lot of reasons to do this. But anyway, I, I'll give you a little bit of an introduction. I just want choices, just want options. That's all I want. I'm not gonna tell anybody. They shouldn't be reading stories. Just, again, I'm questioning what the stories are being read and who's reading them. That's it. That's it. So I'm just a grandpa. Simple dude. There's my introduction. All right, I'm going to give you like five, six, seven seconds, and then we'll go, and I'll tell you what we're going to read today. All right, hello, boys and girls. Welcome to Grandpa Story Ever Hour. I'm Mr. Everts. I am Jason and Wyatt's grandpa. So hello, Jason. Hello, Wyatt. I love you. And uh, I'm glad that you're a part of our story hour. And I'm looking forward to more grandbabies, just so you know. All right, boys and girls, we're going to read one of my favorites. This is actually a request from a dear friend, Kayla, in beautiful Idaho. I would, and so, Miss Kayla, I love you very much. I hope you like the story I'm going to read to you today. There you go. You asked for it. So, You Are Special by Max Lucado. All right, boys and girls, you ready? You sitting tight? Got your blanket, got you everything you need? All right, let's go ahead and start the story because we got to get going before you get restless. All right, love it. So, the Wemmicks. The Wemmicks were small wooden people. All of the wooden people were carved by a woodworker named Eli. His workshop sat on a hill overlooking their village. Each Wemmick was different. Some had big noses. Others had large eyes. Some were tall and others were short. Some wore hats, others wore coats, but all were made by the same carver and all lived in the village. And all day, every day, the Wemmicks did the same thing. They gave each other stickers. Each Wemmick had a box of golden star stickers and a box of gray dot stickers. Up and down the streets all over the city, people spent their days sticking stars or dots on one another. The pretty ones, those with smooth wood and fine paint always got stars. But if the wood was rough or the paint chipped, the Wemmicks, they gave dots. The talented ones got stars too. Some could lift big sticks high above their heads or jump over tall boxes. Still others knew big words or could sing pretty songs. Everyone gave them stars. Some Wemmicks had stars all over them. Every time they got a star, it made them feel so good. It made them want to do something else and get another star. Others, though, could do little. They got dots. Punchinello. Punchinello was one of these. He tried to jump high like the others, but he always fell. And when he fell, the others would gather around and give him dots. Sometimes when he fell, his wood got scratched, so the people would give him more dots. Then, when he would 
tried to explain why he fell, he would say something silly, and the Wemmix, well, would give him more dots. After a while, he had so many dots that he didn't want to go outside. He was afraid he would do something dumb, such as forget his hat or step in the water, and then people would give him another dot. In fact, he had so many gray dots that some people would come up and give him one for no reason at all. Doing a good job listening, Jason and Wyatt. Good job. He deserves lots of dots, the wooden people would agree with one another. He's not a good wooden person. After a while, Punch and Nello believed them. I'm not a good Wemmick, he would say. The few times he went outside, he hung around other Wemmicks who had a lot of dots. He felt better around them. One day he met a Wemmick who was unlike any he'd ever met. She had no dots or stars. She was just wooden. Her name was Lucia. It wasn't that people didn't try to give her stickers. It's just that the stickers didn't stick. Some of the Wemmicks admired Lucia for having no dots, so they would run up and give her a star, but it would fall off. Others would look down on her for having no stars, so they would give her a dot, but it wouldn't stay either. That's the way I want to be, thought Punchinello. I don't want anyone's marks. So he asked the stickerless Wemmick how she did it. It's easy, Lucia said. Every day I go see Eli. Eli? Yes, Eli, the woodcarver. I sit in the workshop with him. Why? Why don't you find out for yourself? Go up the hill. He's there. And with that, the Wemmick, who had no stickers, turned and skipped away. There he is. But will he want to see me? Punchinello cried out. Lucia didn't hear. So Punchinello went home. He sat near a window and watched the wooden people as they scurried around, giving each other stars and dots. It's not right, he muttered to himself. He And he decided to go see Eli. He walked up the narrow path to the top of the hill and stepped into the big shop. His wooden eyes widened at the size of everything. The stool was as tall as he was. He had to stretch on his tiptoes to see the top of the workbench. A hammer was as long as his arm. Punchinello swallowed hard. I'm not staying here. And he turned to leave. Then he heard his name. Punchinello. The voice was deep and strong. Punchinello stopped. Punchinello. How good to see you. Come and let me have a look at you. Punchinello turned around and looked at the large bearded craftsman. You know my name? The little Wemmick said. Of course I do. I made you. Eli stooped down and picked him up and sat him on the bench. Hmm. The maker spoke thoughtfully and as he looked at the gray dots, looks like you've been given some bad marks. I didn't mean to, Eli. I, I, I really tried hard. Oh, you don't have to defend yourself to me, child. I, I don't care what the other Wemmicks think. You don't? No, and you shouldn't either. Who are they to give stars or dots? They're Wemmicks, just like you. What they think doesn't matter, Punchinello. All that matters is what I think, and I think you are pretty special. Punchinello laughed. Me special? Why? I can't walk fast. I can't jump. My pain is peeling. Why do I matter to you? 
Eli looked at Punchinello, put his hands on those small wooden shoulders, and spoke very slowly. Because you're mine. That's why you matter to me. Punchinello had never had anyone look at him like this, much less his maker. He didn't know what to say. Every day I been hoping you'd come, Eli explained. I, I came because I met someone who had no marks, said Punchinello. I know. She told me about you. Why don't the stickers stay on her? The maker spoke softly. Because she has decided that what I think is more important than what they think. The stickers only stick if you let them. What? The stickers only stick if they matter to you. The more you trust my love, the less you care about those stickers. I'm not sure I understand. Eli smiled. You will, but it'll take time. You've got a lot of marks. For now, just come to see me every day, and I let me remind you how much I care. <coughs> Eli lifted Pancello off the bench and sat him on the ground. Remember, Eli said as Wemmick walked out the door, you are special because I made you. And I don't make mistakes. Punchinello didn't stop. But in his heart, he thought, I think he really means it. And when he did, a dot fell off the ground. The end. So who is he? Jason, who is he? He's God. And he's made you and Wyatt and Mommy and Daddy special. And I love you. I hope everyone likes the story. So there you go, Miss Kayla. Bye.